أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الذي أنشأكم وجعل لكم السمع سمع والأبصار والأفئدة قليلا ما تشكون قل هو الذي يغرأكم في الأرض وإليه تحشرون ويقولون متى هذا الوعد صادقين قل إنما العلم عند الله وإنما أنا نذير مبين فلم وقيل هذا الذي كنتم به تدعون قل أرأيتم إن أهلكني الله ومن معي أو رحمنا فمن يجير الكافرين من عذاب أليم قل هو الرحمن آمنا به وعليه توكلنا فستعلمون من هو في ضلال مبين قل أرأيتم إن نصبح ماءكم قورا فمن يأتيكم فمن صدق الله العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم الفاتحة We'll attempt to read in English inshallah Our teachers as well Allah grant us tawfiq Join in where you can those who put the books join in as well We'll start from the beginning Ya Rabbi salli ala Bismillahirrahmanirrahim 
يا ربي صلي على محمد يا ربي صلي عليه وسلم او لورد سنجي ميرسي ابان سيدنا محمد او لورد سنجي ميرسي ام پیس ابان هم يا ربي صلي على محمد يا ربي صلي عليه وسلم Oh Lord, send your mercy upon Sayyiduna Muhammad, your beloved one, the intercessor whose intercession is accepted. Ya Rabbi, salli ala Muhammad. Ya Rabbi, salli alayhi wa sallim. Oh Lord, send your mercy upon Sayyiduna Muhammad, most lofty of mankind in station and most exalted. Ya Rabbi, salli ala Muhammad. Ya Rabbi, salli alayhi wa sallim. Oh Lord, send your mercy upon Sayyiduna Muhammad, highest and most vast of creation in rank. Ya Rabbi, salli ala Muhammad. Ya Rabbi, salli alayhi wa sallim. O oh Lord, send your mercy upon Sayyidina Muhammad. Lead us, my Lord, upon the most virtuous of paths. Ya Rabbi, salli ala Muhammad. Ya Rabbi, salli alayhi wa sallim. O oh Lord, send your mercy upon Sayyidina Muhammad. Give us well-being and cure every suffering one. Ya Rabbi, salli ala Muhammad. Ya Rabbi, salli alayhi wa sallim. O oh Lord, send your mercy upon Sayyidina Muhammad. Rectify hearts, pardoners, and benefiters. Ya Rabbi, salli ala Muhammad. Ya Rabbi, salli alayhi wa sallim. O oh Lord, send your mercy upon Sayyidina Muhammad. Restrain, divert, and deter every aggressor. Ya Rabbi, salli ala Muhammad. Ya Rabbi, salli alayhi wa sallim. O oh Lord, send your mercy upon Sayyidina Muhammad. Allow us to dwell in your impenetrable fortress. Ya Rabbi, salli ala Muhammad. Ya Rabbi, salli alayhi wa sallim. O oh Lord, send your mercy upon Sayyidina Muhammad. Lord, be pleased with us with your most exalted pleasure. Ya Rabbi, salli ala Muhammad. Ya Rabbi, salli alayhi wa sallim. O oh Lord, send your mercy upon Sayyidina Muhammad and make the gardens of paradise our places of gathering. Ya Rabbi, salli ala Muhammad. Ya Rabbi, salli alayhi wa sallim. O oh Lord, send your mercy upon Sayyidina Muhammad. Grant us all the company of the best of your creation. Ya Rabbi, salli ala Muhammad. Ya Rabbi, salli alayhi wa sallim. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik alayhi wa ala ali. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنا فتحنا لك فتحا مبينا ليغفرك الله ما تقدم من ذنبك وما من ذنبك وما تأخر ويتم نعمته عليك ويهديك سراتا سراتا مستقيما وينصرك الله نصرا عزيزا لقد جاءكم رسول من أنفسكم عزيز عليه ما عنتم حريص عليكم بالمؤمنين رؤوف رحيم فإن تولوا ف 
فقل حسبي الله فقل حسبي الله لا إله إلا هو عليه توكلت وهو رب العرش العظيم إن الله وملائكته يسلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا سلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله I take refuge in Allah from the Satan the accursed in the name of Allah the beneficent the merciful Truly we have granted you a clear victory so that Allah may forgive you your previous and latter faults and complete his favor upon you and guide you on a straight path so Allah may help you with a mighty assistance. Indeed a messenger has come to you from amongst yourselves. Your suffering is distressing to him. He is deeply concerned for you. He is gentle and merciful to the believers. but. But if they turn away, say, Allah is enough for me. There is no God but Him. I have put my trust in Him and He is the Lord of the mighty throne. Indeed, Allah and His angels shower blessings upon the Prophet O oh, you who believe, send blessings on Him and salute Him with a worthy salutation. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik alayhi wa ala ali. Praise be to the one who guided us through his chosen slave who summoned us to him by his permission indeed he invited us at your service O Prophet O one who guided and urged us forward Allah your creator has sent mercy upon you through you O possessor of intercession he distinguished and favored us together with your pure family the treasure trove of your highest secrets for they are the ships of salvation, our sanctuary, Sallallahu Alaihi And upon your noble companions, the defenders of your religion, they are models of loyalty to him, Sallallahu Alaihi And upon those who follow them with truthfulness, as long as the camel singers urges the caravan of love, igniting the fires of yearning, Sallallahu Alaihi By Allah, Never is the beloved mentioned in the presence of the lover except that he becomes passionately overwhelmed with joy. Where are the lovers who find ease in sacrificing their souls and every precious thing for their beloved? Never do, they hear, never do they hear mention of Taha, the Chosen One, except by it they are revived and the rust upon their hearts vanish. Their souls have become aroused, yearning for the encounter, longing and asking their Lord for His good pleasure. This is the state of the lover, so listen closely to the life story of the one whose intercession is accepted. And lend an ear to the description of Taha, the elected one, make your hearts present and it will be filled with ecstasy. Sallallahu alayka ya Rasool Allah wa sallam alayka ya Habib Allah pariya sallallahu alayka ya Rasool Allah wa sallam alayka Ya Habib Allah, 
bestowed great favors through him sallallahu alayhi he is the mercy he, he is the mercy of our master reflect upon his words rejoice and through him go forth in utter happiness sallallahu alayhi while taking hold of the firmest handhold and clinging to the rope of allah our originator sallallahu alayhi experience the light of the one who when asked when were you a prophet replied when adam was between earth and water so awaken from your heedlessness concerning this and become enlightened Sallallahu alayhi. contemplate the secrets of my lord continued and transport me safely through the best of loins Sallallahu alayhi. never did two lineages branch out except that i was in the better half until the time of my until the time came for my emergence Sallallahu alayhi. for i am the best of the best I have come into existence through pure unions alone. My Lord has protected this for me. Sallallahu alayhi. 
Allah has purified him, protected him and chosen him. Never has any human being been created like him. Sallallahu alayhi To love him, to mention him, to give him victory and to respect him. Thus we are directed by the Lord of the Throne. Sallallahu alayhi Ya Rabbana salli wa sallim daiman Ala habibika man ilayka da'ana Sallallahu alayhi Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik alayhi wa ala Sallallahu alayka ya Ya Rasul Allah Wa sallam alayka ya Habib Allah Sallallahu alayka ya Ya Rasul Allah Wa sallam alayka ya Habib Allah Muhammad Mustafa Ae Bahara محمد مصطفیٰ آئے بہاراں مسکرا پہیاں کھڑے لے پھولتے کلیاں ہزاراں مسکرا بڑی خوش بخت سی ڈاچی سواری کملی والے دی بڑی خوش بخت سی ڈاچی سواری کملی والے دی حلیمہ ہاتھ جد پھڑیاں مہاراں مسکرا پہیاں کھڑے سن ملتظر سارے نبی مسجد اقصا وچ کھڑے سلم التظر سارے نبی مسجد اقصا وچ امام الانبیاء کتاراں مسکرا امام الانبیاء آئے کتاراں مسکرا پیاں ازل تھی جیڑیاں محروم سن قربت 
ਸੀ ਕਦਮ ਰਖਿਆ ਨਬੀ ਸੋਣੇ ਤੇ ਗਾਰਾਂ ਮੁਸਕੁਰਾ ਪਈਆਂ ਜ਼ਹੂਰੀ ਬੇਕਸਾਨੇ ਸ਼ੁਕਰ ਦੇ ਸਜਦੇ ਅਦਾ ਕੀਤੇ ਜ਼ਹੂਰੀ ਬੇਕਸਾਨੇ ਸ਼ੁਕਰ ਦੇ ਸਜਦੇ ਅਜ਼ਲ ਤੋਂ ਗਮ ਜ਼ਦਾ ਸੋਚਾਂ ਵਿਚਾਰਾਂ ਮੁਸਕੁਰਾ ਪਈਆਂ ਮੁਹੰਮਦ ਮੁਸਤਫਾਏ وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى اله هذا وقد نشر الهات في الكتب بينها لنا تبيانا صلى الله عليه اخذ ميثاق النبيين لما اتيتكم من حكمه احسانا صلى الله عليه وجاءكم رسولنا لا تؤمنون وتستورون وتصبحون اعوانا صلى الله عليه قد بشر اقوامه بالمصطفى عظيم بذلك رتبة ومكانا صلى الله عليه فهو وإن جاء الأخير مقدم يمشون تحت لواله من نادانا صلى الله عليه يا أمة الإسلام أول شافي ومشفى أنا قد تلا أتوانا صلى الله عليه حتى أنادر فعر سلطات وقل يسمع لقالك نجم وفخرك بانا صلى الله عليه ولوا حمد الله جل بيدي ولا اولا اتي انا الجنان صلى الله عليه واكرم الخلق الا الله انا فلقد حباك الله منه حنانا صلى الله عليه ولا صوف يعطيك فتر تجل من معت تقاصر عن اطاه نهانا صلى الله عليه بالله كر الذكر وصف محمد كيما تزيح عن القلوب الرانا صلى الله عليه يا ربنا صل وسلم دائما على حبيبك من اليك دعانا اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى اله so indeed the divine has spread mention of his attributes in the revealed books announcing them to us clearly sallallahu alayhi he took the covenant from the prophets when he said i have given you wisdom the most excellent sallallahu alayhi and when our messenger comes to you then you must believe in him give victory to him and become his helpers sallallahu alayhi they gave their people the good news of the coming of the chosen one Oh how great is that station and rank sallallahu alayhi although he was the last to be sent he will be the foremost all the prophets will walk under the banner of the one who called us sallallahu alayhi o umma of islam i am the first intercessor and my intercession will be accepted i will not hold back in any way whatsoever sallallahu alayhi until it will be said rise from prostration ask and you will be given speak and you will be heard 
for the star of your glory has become manifest sallallahu alayhi the banner of praise of allah the most high will be in my hand and indeed i will be the first to enter paradise sallallahu alayhi i am the most honorable of creation with allah indeed allah has granted you compassion from himself sallallahu alayhi and your lord will give you so that you are pleased Exalted is the giver, our intellects are incapable of grasping his bounty. Sallallahu alayhi By Allah, mention the attributes of Sayyidina Muhammad time and time again in order to remove the rust from our hearts. Sallallahu alayhi By Allah, mention the attributes of Sayyidina Muhammad time and time again in order to remove the rust from our hearts. Sallallahu alayhi Ya Rabbana salli wa sallim daiman Ala habibika man ilayka da'ana Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik alayhi wa ala alayhi When the time drew near for the emergence of Sayyidina Ahmad He came into being by the permission of the one who willed it so Sallallahu alayhi The trustworthy mother, the daughter of Wahhab She whose station had been elevated by God She became pregnant with him sallallahu alayhi from the chosen father abdullah the son of abdul mutalib who saw the evident proof sallallahu alayhi his face overflowed with the light of taha then it was transferred to the protected son sayyidina abdullah for all to see sallallahu alayhi and he sayyidina abdul mutalib was the son of sayyidina hashim the generous the noble who was the son of sayyidina abdul manaf the son of sayyidina kusay sallallahu alayhi and sayyidina Qusay's father was named the wife, his status had been elevated, indeed by them the lineage was strengthened. Sallallahu alayhi. Commit to memory the lineage of the chosen one until you see Sayyidina Adnan in the line of his ancestors. Sallallahu alayhi. At that point stop and realize that the lineage is traced back to Sayyidina Ismail who was the loyal helper to his father Sallallahu Alaihi and while Lady Amina was carrying him she did not complain of anything that befalls pregnant women Sallallahu Alaihi Gentleness from the Lord of Heavens encompassed her and drove away from her all harms, worry and sadness Sallallahu Alaihi and she swore in a vision as narrated what she had come to know that the guardian Allah had honored the universe Sallallahu Alaihi through the pure union of the one who was in her womb so she rejoiced as the time for labor drew near she she was filled with happiness Sallallahu Alaihi the light emanated from all directions for the moment of the birth of the one given intercession had come Subhanallah Alhamdulillah wa la ilaha illallah wa Allahu Akbar Subhanallah Alhamdulillah wa la ilaha illallah wa Allahu Akbar Subhanallah Alhamdulillah wa la ilaha illallah wa Allahu Akbar Subhanallah Alhamdulillah wa la ilaha illallah wa Allahu Akbar ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم في كل لحظة عبد الله ذا نفسي وزينة هيش بدا الكلمات. And shortly before dawn, the sun of guidance was made manifest. The beloved appeared, honored and protected. صلى الله عليه صلى الله السلام عليه. سلام عليك يا حبيب سلام عليك صلوات الله عليك يا نبي سلام عليك يا رسول سلام عليك يا حبيب سلام عليك صلوات الله عليك أبرز الله المشفع صاحب القدر المرفع فما لن نور النواهي عما كل الكون أجمع يا نبي سلام عليك 
يا رسول سلام عليك يا حبيب سلام عليك صلوات الله عليك نكست أسنام شرك وبنا شرك تصوتع ودنا وقت الهداية وهم الكفر تزعزع يا نبي سلام عليك يا رسول سلام عليك يا حبيب سلام عليك صلوات الله عليك مرحبا أهلا وسهلا بك يا ذا القدر الأرفع يا إمام للرسالة من به الآفات تدفع يا نبي سلام عليك يا رسول سلام عليك يا حبيب سلام عليك صلوات الله عليك أنت في الحشر ملاذ لك كل الخلق تفزع وينادون تراما قدها من هول أفضع يا نبي سلام عليك يا رسول سلام عليك يا حبيب سلام عليك صلوات الله عليك مرحبا مرحبا يا نور عيني مرحبا مرحبا جد الحسين مرحبا مرحبا يا نور عيني مرحبا مرحبا جد الحسين صلاها أنت فتسجد مرحبا وتنادى الشفعة شفع مرحبا مرحبا يا نور عيني مرحبا مرحبا جد الحسين مرحبا فعليك الله صلى مرحبا ما بد النور وشعشع مرحبا مرحبا يا نور عيني مرحبا مرحبا جد الحسين مرحبا وبك الرحمن نسأل مرحبا وإله العرش يسمع مرحبا مرحبا يا نور عيني مرحبا مرحبا جد الحسين ربي فوفي اللي ذنوبي يا الله ببركة الحد المشفى يا الله ربي فوفي اللي ذنوبي يا الله مشفى يا الله يا عظيم يا رب يا الله شمننا بالمصطفى اجمع يا الله ربي فوف لي ذنوبي يا الله ببركة الحد المشفى يا الله وبه فانظر إلينا يا الله وعدنا به كل مطمى يا الله ربي فوف لي ذنوبي يا الله ببركة الحد يا الله وكفنا كل البلايا يا الله وضف العفات وارفع يا الله ربي فوف لي ذنوبي يا الله ببركة الحد المشفى يا الله صلى الله على محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم صلى الله على محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وسقنا يا رب أخذنا بحيا هطال يا صلى الله على محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم واختم العمر بحسن واحسن الأقبى ومرجع صلى الله على محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وصلاة الله تغشى من لا حسن تجمع صلى الله على محمد 
صلى الله عليه وسلم أحمد طهرا وآله وصحابة مسناشة صلى الله على محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم صلى الله على محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم كل بفضل الله وبرحمته فبذلك فليفرح وخير مما يجمعون وبسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ورفعنا لك ذكرك أمنت بالله صدق الله العلي العظيم on behalf of myself and Reflection Path السلام عليكم we like to thank you all for attending today there's a couple of reminders before we introduce our guest today, one is for the brothers to come slightly forward, if that's okay. You can do that now. Come on, lads. <laughs> Thank you. And the second one is also, um, whilst the speakers are talking, um, please remember the etiquette of the gathering and to try and keep the noise down. I understand there are children here who may need to talk, but it doesn't need to be constant, if that makes sense. Um, moving to introducing our guest today. Um, I'd like to introduce him as my friend, um, <laughs> that's okay with him. Um, this is Muhammad Isaq, who is, in my opinion, somebody who I really enjoy sitting with and listening to. Um, and his work speaks for itself, so he carries out a project known as Knowing Yourself. Um, and within that, it's the exploration of actually knowing yourself. And I've had the opportunity to listen to uh, Isaac a couple of times. Um, and also, if you look at his work, it speaks for itself. He travels around the world, delivering this workshop to others. Um, and hopefully today we can benefit from him. Also, we have Ustad Abdul Azim as well, who's with us today. Assalamu alaikum. Um, so hopefully we can all benefit from this gathering. Um, and just in my introduction, I did mention two verses from Quran. Uh, the first one being where Allah instructs um, the instructs Prophet ﷺ to tell his companions and to the believers that in God's grace and in God's mercy, gather and celebrate that. There's nothing greater that you can do. It is the greatest thing you can gather for, and that's what we gathered for here today. And secondly, Allah says that we have raised for you your remembrance in regards to the Prophet wasallam. And inshallah, that is what our plan is for today and the remaining, is it 10 days? Remaining 10 days that, that we will be carrying out. We're not, we're not doing anything that's not normal, if that makes sense. We're following Quran here and we are under the tutelage of teachers that are coming to ensure that we have that opportunity to be able to do that. So I would like to pass you on to our speaker today, Ustad Muhammad Isa'ar. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين اللهم ربنا زدنا علما اللهم افتح علينا حكمتك وانشر علينا رحمتك يا ذا الجلال والإكرام سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم افتح علينا حكمتك وانشر علينا رحمتك يا ذا الجلال والإكرام صلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله الطيبين التاهرين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين Is it okay? Should I move it? الحمد لله We are We are 
fortunate in in every moment where we are connected to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and what a shame it is for us to spend a moment to not make mention of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and God has made it as such uh, the re reason why I like Sidi here who was uh, speaking is he's very aware <laughs> of the times and we do need reminders like that where there's this confusion where um, where, where sometimes people misunderstand uh, about the remembrance of, of the Prophet Sallallahu and they make it like this separation type of an understanding and unfortunately it goes back down to the fact that they haven't studied just basic Aqidah and there's no way no one ever makes a claim of anything ever that the Prophet Sallallahu has any likeness or any divinity Alhamdulillah our Ummah has been saved from this you don't find in Islamic history anyone ever Tawheed is so clear Tawheed is so clear that, and this is the beauty of the Prophet ﷺ, we have in our tradition where you had people associate divinity with Sayyidina Ali, <laughs> but not with the Prophet ﷺ. It's just amazing. So, uh, you know, unfortunately we have to just, but it's good this wisdom in today's time to just remind people, you know, uh, uh, just mentioning poetry. And, and the other thing I also appreciated and I think it's important is we do read this in English. I mean, did you guys appreciate it so much? When you hear it in English, you know, it's just so nice, isn't it? The meaning, the journey. That's what the journey of the Mawlid is supposed to be. It's supposed to take us on this journey. A journey that, that, that takes us from somewhere to somewhere. You know, if we stay stagnant at the end of the, of the Mawlid, then what's, what's really happened? Uh, our teachers would say that, uh, that, that, the, that the singing and the praises and all this stuff is like, is like uh, mixing sugar in like a tea you mix the sugar and so then when you mix the sugar it gets sweet but to increase the the, <laughs> the potency of the tea or the sugar you have to ha increase it with knowledge so the real beauty of poetry as it was supposed to be and maybe for some of us youngsters who are urdu's maybe not the strongest or some of the the knots that we don't understand but there's all these people who are like just going reaching ecstasy in those moments you know, well, what's going on there? Because there's this unique combination in that poetry of actual, of, of seeking knowledge. Knowledge is, is offered and people grow. And so not only does the content of the sugar increase, but then it also mixes and it tastes really good. And this isn't white sugar that we all stay away from, which is probably the equivalent of cocaine. Uh, but if it's actually uh, good, healthy sugar, <laughs> sorry, sorry about the reference there, but it's, it, it's because white sugar, we should just stay away from. Everyone should just stay away from it. Uh, and, uh, and, and also white bread, if you didn't know. But um, there's nothing against white people. <laughs> yeah, it's just, you know, this refined stuff, subhanAllah. And you can only take a trip back to Pakistan and see the condition of half of your cousins and how, how the diet, diet is for them. And diet's massive. You know, diet is the secret to all of the remedies that we're seeking. Every remedy that we're seeking is in our diet. And diet was never exclusive to uh, physical diet or nutritional diet. Diet includes the people you hang with, the YouTube feed. They call it YouTube feed for a reason because it's feeding you. Yeah, your Instagram feed is called feed for a reason because it feeds you. And... and um, and this is, uh, this is, these are crucial uh, realities in today's time. So, so it's important for us to just be awake of, of, of these types of things. So when we read this, we don't only just get the sugar, uh, the healthy sugar, but we also get the experience of the tasting of the sugar. So I, I encourage everybody to really read the translations, read them often. We're, we're fortunate in our times, there's so many translations happening um, that you can't go wrong. And you know, I just looked at this beautiful book, uh, The Breezes of the Elect. Yeah, Breezes of the Elected, it's such a beautiful uh, uh, collection of all these wonderful poems that you can read uh, with the meaning and you can just sit with them and share the meaning. Heck, you could go to one of those uh, Def Jam poetry sessions and just read Breezes of the Elected and do it with a bit of a bopsing tune to, to make it more familiar to the authentic UK experience. Wallahi, you'll do a great da'wah. And you, that's why you're here, by the way. Part of you being here is not just to fill your cup. You don't just fill your cup and run off. Right? The, you know why the dervishes have their hand here and their hand here? Do you know why the dervishes represent that? Because the dervish, he receives and then he gives. The, the dervish represents 
what, you're, what we're all supposed to be, the Khalifa to Allah fil Ard, is the one who takes and constantly gives. So I hope you take inspiration. These poetry sessions, these poetry jam sessions, the kind of cultures that all of humanity uh, was involved in. What was it in the, in the, in the, in the, in the Mawlid that we read? That the camel singers, uh, they, they would sing and urge on the camels. That by singing, even the beasts, even the camels get excited. So what do you think is going to happen to you and me when we sing? Yeah? <laughs> and when we sing, uh, when we sing uh, uh, beautiful poems, because, because singing is an art. Uh, singing is an art that was explored by the Islamic tradition to great depths. You know, some of it, we just went to Spain recently, so we did lots of exploration of Spain, and part of that was to explore the impact of the uh, uh, of the of the impact of singing, and poetry, and meters, and the poetic meters, and the difference between this techno garbage, which is just basic repetitions that do people's head in. Where's it going? And then they just And then they do some crazy stuff what, What's happening at that moment Versus if you ever listen to Mawlaya salli wa salim da'iman abadan When you hear that Oh man I'm getting flashes to Abbas Qadri as a youngster When you hear that You can just hear the lamenting, the lamenting, the, the real depression that we're supposed to have, the real anxiety we're supposed to have. Everyone's getting depressed and anxious because they're getting depressed and anxious over created beings and created things. When you're depressed and anxious over, the, 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 over God, over the Prophet ﷺ, these types of you know, linking to uh, his creation, it's a whole different experience. Then it's a comfortable melancholy. It's the most beautiful melancholy at that point. And that's how uh, we're supposed to be aware of a lot of these beats and a lot of these types of meters and what they do to us and what they're I I inclining us towards. So every single one of us, and we live in a time of uh, uh, like radio and you go to the shop and you've got all sorts of music playing and words being chanted. SubhanAllah, words being chanted, if you want to look at neuroplasticity and how many uh, 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 connections are formed in the brain when you're trying, you're forming. Every time you try, you form. And so if you listen to uh, madness that's just about any old stuff, then it will form connections in you whether you like it or not. And... And then you'll just hate on people for no reason. Or you'll have beef with somebody because the guy singing the song was talking about some beef he had. And then you inherit this beef so all these youngsters <laughs> then start feeling like, yeah, it's, you know, i got to beat somebody up now. Why? Because it was conditioned. It's part of the conditioning. So, you, so in the Islamic tradition, they studied these meters. Everyone's like, you know, get scared now when you say singing. They're like, don't say singing, say reading or not. Yeah, we don't want to say singing, we say reading and not. But Dawud was singing. You know, uh, when you're happy, you sing. There's just, it's part of the human being expression. And if in history, at a time when people were connected with the vibrations and all this type of stuff that's connected to this, uh, then when they were sad, they would sing. You know, and this singing was authentic, not just like, you know, uh, 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 empty instruments that have no meaning, but this was deep, reflective meaning. I mean, uh, the great um, Farabi, you know, once this, once in this Andalusia, once the king, he was, um, he had some people in his court and he couldn't understand their language. And so he said, does anyone understand these? They were like uh, aboriginals, like natives of the land, or some, some, other, some place. So he said, does anyone speak this language? And so this young man stepped forward, Farabi, and he said, you know, I speak the language. And so, so, he, uh, so he translated, and the king said, oh, not bad, it's not really a spoken language. So, you know, do you speak any other languages? He said, yeah, I know 70 languages. Yeah, so, so they said to him, um, so, he, so the king said, you know Arabic? And then he said, yeah, I know Arabic. So the king said to him, uh, so he said, okay, let's test him. So he brought all the best grammarians, and they tested him. And, um, and then he got all the answers correct. And then, uh, then he said, what other sciences do you know? So he said, I know, uh, 
and, and I'm going to link this to the talk. I'm just not doing what I was supposed to do. But um, he said, uh, he said, I know logic, I know music, uh, which is pe- uh, uh, meters, and uh, uh, and all these other sciences. And then he said to him, uh, the king said, tell me about music. And so uh, Farabi said, uh, let me play something for you. So he started playing something, and he made everybody laugh with his tune that he played. So the whole whole group, the guests of the king, all start laughing. And then he changed his tune, and they all started to cry. Yeah. And then he changed the tune, and they all fell asleep. Yeah. And this is a real story. This is a real story. So then the Muslims then what they did was they incorporated a lot of this in the healing. Uh, Maristan system If any of you guys know about the Maristans or Bemaristans They were called Places of healing Where they actually incorporated much of the singing So this here I mean When Haji Saab did the singing When the, the, young, the young boys were singing And especially MashaAllah See the Afa Like I was listening to YouTube uh, Like uh, you know it's, MashaAllah It's fantastic Didn't it make you just smile The moment you listen to it You know These dopamine hits All healthy dopamine hits you know, all, all health. This is where we were supposed to sing. We were supposed to sing in tunes. Uh, human beings always did this. Uh, much of, they say, about um, uh, Nizamuddin Awliya, to which we are, many of us on this side here, responsible. <laughs> uh, our Islam goes back to, we're, we're Muslims, because of the propagation of Islam. And much of it was done through poetic and expressions and incorporating the beautiful messages within those forms so we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to bring that insha'Allah into uh, our being um, and into our lives, into our hearts so that we can express properly and know how to express and you know, become uh, artists which I, I argue everybody is an artist. Everybody is an artist in some form and your biggest art is what you've done with yourself. You know, what does, you, what does yourself say? What does yourself say? And when we do that, then this, the, the self does all the da'wah. There's no need to be speaking. We all know those people. We see them and they just remind us. They may do astaghfar just by looking at them. We say salah ala al-habib when we see them. We read salawat straight away. We say la ilaha illallah when we see those people. May Allah make us from those people who has the states of, the, of this and, and, and the state will always speak. We always are communicating. May Allah allow us to communicate good stuff. Inshallah. Um, so I'll, I'll just go back to really um, what, the, what I was invited to speak about. And uh, I don't like to do um, speeches. Surprising. Some of you may be surprised. But I actually hate it. Um, uh, but when they asked to speak about the Prophet ﷺ, and that's an invitation from God to, uh, to, to give your life a meaning, the greatest of meaning. You know, your life has purpose now, <laughs> real purpose. If your life's goal and purpose doesn't have the Prophet ﷺ included, what are you doing? You know, we, we ask ourselves, and no wonder why we get sad and we get... Because we have no great uh, uh, direction. You know, the direction is... The directions are many, but there's one signpost which says the Muhammadan way. And as long as we see that sign, وسلم, this is what we can follow. But if we don't have these, these posts that point us to the Muhammadan way, then we just get lost and we'll start even studying like Arabic grammar to like nth degree or, <laughs> or you know, uh, working and I'm going to become a hot shot in some corporate world and say, cheers, Gary. And keep cheering Gary all the way with God knows what direction I'm going and just, yeah, yeah I'll be on the weekend, Gary, see you there at the golf. Oh, golf, now, now I'm learning golf just so I can chill with Gary. <laughs> I have no passion for golf, but here I am golfing away. So th- this is because the, what, uh, what else is this dunya except illusions of thinking that we're, this is what I need. Subhanallah. Um, how scary is it? One of the greats, they said that one of the sicknesses of their time was that people came to the stage, Imam al talks about this, that they said, what do I do? This is the sign of the greatest, mad, like, uh, that the sign that, that the society 
is uh, is is uh, I can't remember if said it's the last or but this it was clearly not a good thing. I can't remember exactly. But when they say, w w what am I supposed to do? We always have purpose, and you know, if you look, connect back to your life and jump off the internet, then a lot of what you need to do <laughs> is apparent. But the internet makes you forget what you need to do. Anyway, inshallah. So I'll start <laughs> now. Inshallah, Allah will be with the Shaitan So I seek refuge in, in, from uh, from from um, Shaitan with the last one to Allah. The last one Allah tells us in the Quran. Indeed, a messenger has come from amongst you. Azizan alayhi ma'anitum. Grievous to him is what concerns you. A messenger has come from amongst you, Aziz and Ali, Ma'anitum. Wallah, these people here have, the, have such difficulties in life. Face battles alone, people don't know about. Their nafs alone gives them such a hard time. People give them a hard time. They've come from difficulties after difficulties. Every single person here, Wallahi, we live in a time where we think that everyone's perfect. Everyone's got so much they're dealing with. Some people are trying to get married. They try, can't seem to get married. Those who are married can't stay, seem to stay married. Those who are married looking for children. Can't, some people can't have children. There's so much that people carry in this world. And Wallahi, we look from places to places. Who's going to share my burden? Who's going to share my, my troubles? And we jump on the Instagram and we then write something, we jump off and we write the indirect stuff on WhatsApp or, you know, this is the world we live in and we, then we go and we get a therapist and we hope this therapist is going to listen to me because of my great sad story. And this therapist is like, well, the time's up, you know, make sure you give me, <laughs> give me your next payment, I'll listen to you again. Well, like, we live in this time where, you know, some of us growing up, maybe in Derby, you still got it going on, where people visit each other, aunties and uncles visit each other, brothers, cousins visit each other. Now people are so isolated into their phones, and then we're sad that no one listens to us. We had aunties, I remember, uh, you know, one of, one of my local aunties, she used to stay till like 1am, we play PlayStation, she's there just, if my parents got to sleep, she's still there. You know, <laughs> subhanAllah, what life that existed in, in homes, in hearts, in communities, and how this isolation has just reduced us all. And now we walk around with these difficulties and this overexposure to phones that has not just had our fingers fried, but our eyes are dried and fried and our brains are bamboozled and you can see on people's faces. And but we, we just put a filter on and it's all okay now, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> that's what we do, just swipe. You know, there's a solution for everything, just swipe away. SubhanAllah. As if you could swipe reality. It was the Dajjal does, right? He swipes reality and he puts a filter. A'udhu <laughs> Billahi. Just inversion. May Allah protect us from fitna of Dajjal. So, لَقَدْ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولُ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ عَزِيزٍ عَلَيْهِ مَا عَنِتُمْ He cares about you. He is harmed about what you're harmed. It hurts him what hurts you. When you, do, when you do good, he sees it and then he, he praises Allah for it. And when you do bad, then he makes it still far for you. What have we done to deserve such a ni'mah? Every day you go to sleep and the Prophet has made, made it still far for you just because you're from his ummah. So why do we still sell ourselves short, huh? And he is watchful over the believers. And he is Ra'ufur Rahim. Allah gives him, uh, to describe him, وسلم, Allah gives his own names, Ra'ufur Rahim. Uh, he's compassionate and he's merciful with his believers. And this is why we sit here and he sings, you know, this beautiful nad, uh, you know, invite us back to Medina. Yeah. You know, the ones who are going to Medina. You know, go and be in the safety of God. But maybe one day, even my uh, my bed may be laid out in Medina for me one day. You know, 
And so th this is this is the beauty of uh, the Prophet Sallallahu So many beauties, we can just go on and on. I mean, the city asked me how long we're going on for. And I, and I, <laughs> I love coming to Derby. Allah, you guys are beautiful people. Um, and uh, you must have some like special awliya in Derby. Definitely do. And I hope that you guys make dua that you don't just uh, have them or you meet them. Make dua that when you meet them, you know you've met them. That's the hard part. Everyone's got a wali awliya at home. It's called mom and dad. But people don't see that. They want to go visit so-and-so sheikh and do khidmat to so-and-so sheikh. And your, sheik, your sheikh's at home. You know. Um, so, inshallah. And, 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 the, and then people, now some people may be getting sad saying you're triggering me. Yeah? <laughs> because we all get triggered over everything now. And, 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 and what I would say to those people is that that is... That, that is a path for you. Whatever that person is or that, whatever, you need to understand what it means to you and God. If in your picture you can see just you and, you and God, as in, you, as in if I deal with this person, but this is sent by Allah, if I see Allah has sent this person, then, then I will be amazing to this person. Right? Irrespective of this person, how this person is to me, if this person is sent by God, I will maintain goodness with this person. The moment I stop remembering God, and then I see this face, and I see this individual, now politics start. Always. This is how all humanity works. Politics start when we forget God. When we f and that's why it's so dangerous to go into politics. <laughs> you know, but, but trying to navigate all these relationships, if you have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's way easier. Every person is, is a gift from God. And so, and so we just want to bring in, while we're here on this uh, topic of Mawlid. Uh, sorry, yeah, I was saying last year, and you, you know, I remember you guys just said speak and speak and speak. So he said, how long do you want to speak for? And, and I, normally I like when they give the time. Um, but then uh, he said, speak as long as you want. I said, this is the prophecy. I said, oh, we could speak forever. We could speak forever. You know, they, where, where can't we go for? This is the greatest... This is a great of creation. Now how can you not speak about the greatest of, of, of the creation of Allah? You know, this is Allah's greatest creation is the Prophet you know, what, what do you think that is? Like, you know, like people get... People get have you ever seen people on, um, talk about like, they, like, you know, you have two uh, schools of uh, phones. There's Apple and there's Android. Yeah, so there's the Apple school. Uh, Apple-y, they call them, and then the Android-y, yeah. <laughs> and so the Apple ones can talk about iPhones forever and ever. It's the greatest phone, and this and that, and this and that. And the and Android ones can speak for, for kingdom come. These are all of us, you know, we can talk about the things that we love. But the, this is the, the beloved of Allah. What do you think is going to happen there? What do you think that reality is? So, I just want us to explore. Uh, and the topic that we're covering is the, is the, in, in, in the intellect of the Prophet ﷺ, which again is, is incredible. And I thought that... Well, why don't we stretch our intellects a little bit to try to take some wisdoms before we then learn about his intellect? Uh, does that sound okay? Are you guys too tired? I'm emotional now, so. But I, I'm, I got reserves. Yeah? You guys okay to do some just thinking? Because I know people like to just sit back and just let the person talk and. Ah, subhanAllah. <laughs> yeah, we were, are we involved, yeah? Okay. Otherwise, I don't talk. I'll go sit down. There's better people to listen to. So we're all listening together, inshallah. We're talking together. Now, this, you know this word mawlid? The word mawlid is uh, fascinating. The Arabic language is fascinating because the Arabic language gives us a great insight into actual words themselves. And that's why Allah, sent, Allah says, we sent down the Quran in order that you may be, perhaps you may, you may become intelligent people. You may become people of intellect. So when you learn Arabic, you automatically start to become intelligent. Anyone who studies Ar Arabic will know that in the forming of any words, you actually feel like you're doing substitution in maths class, like algebra, yeah, right? Because you're, you're, you're putting in, you have a formula and you put these words into the formula and, you cr and then you see what it creates. And if you do it long enough, you'll actually become a poet. Arabic makes you a poet because now you can form your own. Yeah, I was I was once on the phone in Egypt and I was at the Arabic school and I said Hataftuhu, yeah. <laughs> so the, the teacher was he's like laughing, he says we don't say Hataftuhu. The Hatif is a phone and he said he he said you made it into a verb, but it was interesting because technically it was correct. I, I phoned him. So I said I phoned rather to be like I communicated with him, it's probably more a, a, a connector. 
a correct way of expressing it but just the beauty of the language it allows you to open up and start to understand these intricate details so i remember last time i think i was here i spoke about the word uh, darasa which means to efface so when you learn you also get rid of this is the darasa experience madrasa gets rid of stuff you get rid of all your nonsense and then, and then the truth that you're upon manifests well the word maulid itself the the word maulid is a noun referencing time and place yeah maulid is a, a noun that references time and place makan and zaman so it's on the pattern like uh, like manzil like manzil is the place that you know you would you would get down at so it could be even like your manzil is your home for example or maskan is your is your home where you find sakina that's called a maskan so 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 maulid has the meaning of uh, a place uh, and the makan the zaman and obviously because it's synonymous with the prophet sallallahu so it's the makan and the zaman in, of the prophet sallallahu Okay, just we'll take that as the first thing. Mawlid is makan and zaman, ontological principles of time and place. And if it's related to the Prophet ﷺ, then it's in time you have mawlid and in place you have mawlid. So in places, there are places in which the Prophet ﷺ is, 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 uh, is appreciated and celebrated. Like as Sidi was mentioning, you know, Allah says, be happy with the blessing. So the blessing is the Prophet ﷺ, and in time we're also uh, celebrating this. But the other interesting thing in the Arabic language is that each letter has an individual meaning as well. And if you learn the individual meanings, you get, to, you get an insight into each words themselves. So you know sha, sh, sheen. Sha has a meaning of things which spread. So sh, uh, shajara, which is a tree, is because the tree spreads. Shams, which is the sun, is because the sun spreads. And if you track each of the letters, you get an even interesting, more interesting meaning. For example, with Shams, the Sheen has a meaning of spreading. The Meme has a meaning of, has a meaning of uh, a thing or being. So a thing, a thing that spreads. And Seen has a meaning of, of flowing energy. So Shams is the thing that has flowing energy. And it spreads to every, every, every person. So we can explore lots of concepts. I'll give you another one. So, uh, sahib, which is companion or suhba. It comes from sad, ha and ba. Sad has a meaning of likeness, homogeneity. So something's like. So your friends are like you. Ha is life and ba is medium. So your friends are a medium of life. That's why when you see your friends, you get life again. Oh. You breathe when you see your friends. You say, ha. You get life again. Yeah? So this is suhba. suhba. So, so when, you start to, when you stop giving life to your friends, they don't be your friends anymore. Yeah? They're called dementors yeah? in Hogwarts. Yeah? So they suck the life out of you. So inshallah, you'll be a person who's a, who does good suhba. This is a good tip for parents. Because Sayyidina Ali said with your teenagers, yeah? what did he say with your teenagers? Have suhba with them. Yeah? So don't become a dementor for your teenager. Become a life-giving person who's like them show you show how you are like not how you're different this is a good tip for for parents just for teenagers but hopefully all of us can take this so what's the what's the what's maulid got to, uh, to indicate to us maulid as we said meme wawa lam and dal meme has the meaning of a place a thing or being a place a thing or being wow has a meaning of uh of it it, it brings things together wow brings things together yeah and then uh, lam has a meaning of like service or for or provides for. And then dal means direction. Yeah? Direction. So that's why Muhammad means the, the being of life, the being of direction. Meem ha, meem dal. Yeah? The, 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 being, the being of life and the being of direction. And maulid means the, the thing which, which, is, which, which, which will connect uh, direction for you. Uh, the thing that will connect direction for you. So why, do, why are people obsessed with mawlid? And why do people who, who know mawlid do mawlid again and again and again? And in reality, all celebrate. Whenever the Prophet is mentioned, that's mawlid. Why? Because you, are, you have something in your life that is like a, sign po a signpost of the way of the Prophet That's why we're here. Because we are using this as a moment to signpost ourselves back to the way of the Prophet 
And, and so, so with that, we can then look at who we are and understand that as a being, I am a being in time and place. Right? So in my time, where is, where is the Prophet Wasallam? Where is the Mawlid in my time? So you're here on this occasion, which is a one-off. But what about the repetitive things? Does every person here have in their week what would be considered a time in their week that brings them back to the Prophet Sallallahu Have you got that thing penciled? If you haven't, absolutely you should put in your week minimum, once a week you have a thing that's the signpost that brings you back to the Prophet Sallallahu way. For most people, actually let's just, let's hear from people, just maybe about three or four uh, things that people maybe have in their lives, inshallah, do it with the intention of sharing. Anyone want to tell us? I mean, I can go on and on, but I'll just bring some people in. Sorry? What, what day? Friday. Friday. So he knows on Friday they're doing the Dala'il gathering, they're sending salawat upon the Prophet ﷺ from a very special book which then does uh, miracles for people when they read it. Yeah, <laughs> which I'm sure you've had some interesting stories for sure. You should go sit with him and ask him, by the way. If you haven't already, ask him, trust me, no one reads that book and doesn't have a miracle to tell every single time. Yeah, good. So every Friday, what do you do? You go to mosque, excellent. So she has what is a daily reminder. Because she daily goes to mosque, she has a daily reminder. What else do we have? Shimmering light on Thursdays. I told you, God, Darby's blessed. MashaAllah, like the Friday is happening, the, uh, the Thursday is happening. She's got it happening every day. MashaAllah. Let me give you a sad story about people when they grow up. When they grow up, they don't go to mosque as much. Very sad story. That's a short story. It's a very sad story. So may you allow people to start to go to mosque again inshallah yeah so you're gonna invite people say to them hey come mosque with me yeah start doing stuff like that you do that you'll be doing da'wah and you know the people on da'wah they they have they fly on clouds the clouds carry them they don't carry the da'wah the da'wah carries them <laughs> wallahi yeah you're gonna be like floating around you're gonna see, people are gonna be like what happened to her she's just like a trooper because the, you do now you do da'wah ila Allah wa rasul yeah? If you invite to Allah and the Prophet you'll be flo like trust me if I'm wrong you tell me okay It's not a physical cloud that don't look underneath you Maybe it might happen It might happen inshallah uh, Anybody else one, one other thing One maybe a little bit of a creative way of remembering the, the Prophet every week Daily salawat Daily salawat Do you have a time though? I want to hear a time You haven't got a time but Does it exist? When, when is it? When do you do the daily salawat? Some people put tasbih in their car, in the middle of the car, so it reminds them to do, so when they jump in the car, they do the tasbih. What else? Kabristan every, every Friday. So these are all the different things which should be indicating a, a, a. Now, Sidi, what you've just mentioned there is now makan. So not just the fr Fridays is, uh, is, uh, is the zaman, but every single thing that everyone mentioned has with it makan. Makan and Zaman, so mosque at 4 p.m. Qabristan at this p.m. Dalal gathering at this time. Now let me tell you something why this is so powerful and why I'm going on about what seems to be the most basic thing, Makan and Zaman. Every single one of us has repetitive sins, sins that come back again and 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 again. And we do a thousand times istighfar and we just keep going and it just keeps repeating. It might be swearing, it might be types of addictions, it might be all sorts of stuff. They, these sins repeat again and again. What's the hack? Makan and zaman. If you find yourself at that time, at that place, when you're doing that sin, don't try to be a hero and say, now I'm all of a sudden, now I don't do that sin anymore. Just don't be at that place, at that time. Watch what happens. Watch what happens. Just don't be at that place at that time. So everything in existence from Mawlid, from, from the sins, they all have what we call ontological properties of time and place. So hack the time and place and you've done it. You got rid of it. Try this. Wallahi, try this and message me. Just message me. It worked. Don't mention anything else. <laughs> yeah. It worked. Yeah, and if it, and, 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 and probably it would work, and then and then some of us have a, we're drawn to that place at that time. And place we said also are people. 
Those people at that time, that happens. Those places at that time, that happens. On your bed, 11 o'clock, that happens. With your mates at 3 p.m., that happens. 2 a.m., this place, that happens. So hack it from time and place, inshallah. Is that okay? So this is a sign, a small example. Sorry, I'm going to really get comfortable out here. <laughs> I love the Derby uh, I feel you're so, um, you're so thirsty for knowledge. I don't know. I might be completely reading completely wrong. Anyway, so now by using in intelligence, by using aql, what have we done? We have activated that part of us that differentiates us from every other creation. The greatness of the human being, first and foremost, in his, his or her creation, was in the forming and the having an intellect. In the intellect is the place, yeah, one second. In the intellect is the place from where you have then the, the faculty of will and the faculty of uh, uh, qudra. But qudra obviously is dependent on what Allah gives it, but willpower, which is also what Allah gives, Allah has given it within the human being that you are now. Uh, you have willpower. This, this intelligence, Imam Ghazali shares, says that everything that's connected, so the human being is a, what we call a rational animal. The logicians would say it's a rational animal. The human being, when it does what separates it from the rest of it, that's when it activates its true reality. If it doesn't think, what does it become? It just becomes the same as the rest of its group. What's its group? What's its group? The animal. If you're not thinking and seeking knowledge, you automatically, me and you, we will liken ourselves to animals. All we will do is eat, sleep, and drink, and procreate, and just the basic animal things. And do you know that they did... Uh, have you ever been... Um, on a walk like in the farm, uh, the farms at like night time. You ever heard that music in the, in, have you ever seen the music playing in those places? Festivals. No, not festivals. <laughs> but I like your creativity. Um, <laughs> if you go to farms at night time, you'll find that some barns have music playing. Do you know this? Put your hand if you know this. No one ever taken a stroll down here, thank you, yeah? Peak District, somewhere you just walk around, all of a sudden there's a barn and music. Most people say, or maybe you haven't gone because somebody said it's a jinn. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a hostel for Allah, yeah? Um, they, the reason they play the music is why? Because the animals eat more. As simple as that. Animals is proven that if the music is being played, the animals graze more. Why do you think they put music on in uh, play, restaurants? You don't know that? We have been studied in, on a degree that we don't even know. You understand that? They play the music because you buy more and graze more. What do you think every shop you go to this music? Think about it. They are using electricity based on econ economics. From a capitalistic perspective, you shouldn't be playing the music, right? So why are they playing the music in the, in the, in the place? Because you buy more, you become into graze mode, your animal kicks in. Your animal mo mode kicks in. That's why most music, if you know, if you've ever, which uh, people are like, oh, still for a lot, I don't know about music. Bro, you, everyone watches YouTube, innit? Yeah? The adverts kick in, so you haven't escaped it, yeah? So it, the music kicks in, and it has an immediate impact on you, immediately. And that impact is one based of impulsivity, it's based on your animalistic nature, your quick to react nature, your quick response nature, your bestial nature. That's also why they make the plates so big. Have you ever noticed why the plates are massive? Because they make the plates massive so you fill the plate more. They, they have studied us to the nth degree so that they can make more money of us. Of us. We want to be able to use this knowledge to control the nafs. They exploit the nafs. And so, uh, oh, where was I, what was I saying? Alhamdulillah, I forgot. Sorry? Yeah, and this idea of, so, yes, yeah, so, the, the, so we stay at an animal level. When we, now I just told you intelligence, right? I gave you, hopefully, your intellect, uh, you know, got ziyada. So next time you go to the shop and the music's playing, 
You're now cognizant, you're aware. What would you do in the shop? Walk straight out. No, I'm joking, yeah? But you could just read Audhu Billah. Not the Audhu Billah, the, the old ignorant Audhu Billah, which is, A'udhu Billahi min ash Like, who are you talking to? If you're really saying Audhu Billah, like the proper one, then you just say Audhu Billah min ash protect yourself from it, and then you can carry on. And you can hopefully navigate things that are essential. Right, hopefully the essential things, but you don't want to be grazing in these places. But not the type of a one where you're just doing it as if like you're trying to make a statement to others. This is how you protect yourself. So now you start to activate in intellect. When you activate your intellect, you start to differentiate yourself from beasts. Man transcends beast level by the intelligence which allows him to, to achieve what? Higher than the angel's level. Because now human beings choose goodness. So now with that, so now I've given you this, and now if you use this, well, I haven't given you it. Allah has opened it for us, right? We said, Allah maftah alayna, maftah alayna hikmatak, right? Inna fatahna laka fatham mubina. So these are openings we call them. So inshallah we all receive this opening, a reminder. When you do this, your behavior will automatically start to become different. The more you remind yourself, the more your behavior becomes different. So what do you activate in yourself in these moments? What do you activate within yourself in these moments? You activate, what would you call it? Consciousness. What do you activate now that you have knowledge and you can now say, oh, and carry on. Hmm? Now you can, you know, you avoid those places, makan, zaman, you may say, do you want to link about this time? You say no. Presence. Presence. Taqwa. Taqwa. Uh, what's your name, little one? Simran. Simran. Simra. Simra. Uh, the Simra, they called it patience. Uh, they called it, uh, what did you say? Taqwa, presence. These beautiful things. We, we call them superpowers, you and me. Yeah, they become human superpowers. The human being becomes a superhero just by opening these ways of understanding. When you open up your intellect, you go to the point, and if you do it with your heart, of course, you get to the point where you transcend the societal beasts, and then you, all of a sudden, you just become this amazing person. And so let me tell you now, if, if just by doing this, like your mate says, how come you don't meet us at this time? And you don't roll with us anymore? You now know Makan and Zaman's on alert. At this time, at this place, I don't roll there at that time, brother. You want to link up, you're linking me out at 6 p.m. They said, but cuz I'm free at 10 p.m. 6 p.m. brother. Oh, but come on. <laughs> yeah, 6 p.m. When you can nail that, you will automatically free yourself of all of that nonsense. Every one of us is like this. But when you do this, people will be like, oh, how did this person transcend the shackles that we were all in? Everyone's experienced this. When you transcend the shackles of that environment that you came from, and hopefully you don't just become like, you, you start to bring those brothers as well and the sisters and everybody, inshallah. But when you do that, that is what superheroes are made of. This is next level. This is the beauty of what, the, the, what man is supposed to be. In fact, you be so, become so amazing, you actually dumbfound the scientist within you and the empiricist. But that's another conversation, so I'm going to tangent. So what I want to introduce now, just for a moment, inshallah, because it is in the molid, I want to show you what's your pinnacle. What's your pinnacle in existence? It's the Prophet ﷺ. Your pinnacle is the Prophet ﷺ. And the more you follow him, the more you achieve what he achieved. So in the subsection of the intellect, let's talk about the intellect of, of the Prophet ﷺ. What does Qadi Yad mention about the intellect of the Prophet ﷺ? So I'm, gonna make a, I'm just going to take out just the points for you, inshallah. So now it's in this context of the conversation. Now we understand what you, what you and I can achieve if we go the Muhammadan way. Inshallah. Say inshallah. We're going to achieve it. Inshallah. So the first thing. Uh, uh, one of the great scholars, he, he, scholars said, he goes, I read 71 books. I read 71 books. This is at a time when books were not as, as accessible. He said, I, I read 71 books, meaning 71 sciences. I read 71 sciences. And I found that the Prophet Sallallahu intellect was the greatest of all of these sciences. So this is a scholar who studied all these 71 su su subjects. He says, I found the Prophet Sallallahu emotional intelligence, intelligence of all these behavioral intelligence, psychology, etc. The Prophet Sallallahu he said, I found he had this most superior intellect and the best opinion of the Prophet Sallallahu 
right? He says, and from all this I found that Allah has given different types of intellect and different types of wisdom to different people. He says, but the greatest in comparison to him, all of these books, they created not even a seed of what the Prophet's intelligence was and has. And if you ever get the chance to sit with the true scholars or sit with a Hakim, like a real Hakim, they'll blow your mind. They will actually blow your mind. You won't understand. You'll think it's like a Mr. Miyagi thing or something. I, I, I'm serious about that. You know, we had one teacher once in, 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 uh, in Qigong, yeah, Dr. Yang. And, you know, he showed us stuff. Wallahi, I had a one-to-one -one with him. When I went in for the one-to-one -one and the sister was leaving, she was leaving the one-to-one, -one, she came and she said, she said, I'm going to, in the terms, she's about, I'm going to quote her, Kasmes Jins. Now that's not a technical point, that's an expression, yeah? <laughs> it's an expression, I wrote my name on the piece of paper, Dr. Yang touched it, and he detected three parts of where I was ill, uh, I had illnesses. These are one of the many sciences, you know how many scholars in our tradition say, as I die, 11 sciences die with me. Another scholar said, as I die, 40 sciences go with me, because I didn't find a student who was going to take that science on. I myself went to Hakim Saab, uh, Ansar was on the way, because Ansar just about finally did the knowing yourself class. He said, it's boy. He said, I can't believe, like, you know, what? he was like, this is, you know, he was like, you're like Imam Ghazali, he goes to me. <laughs> he goes, because you're reviving something that was so lost. And I, and I, and I remember having the same experience with Hakim Saab, and, and I said, Hakim Saab, do you know, Worry that this knowledge will be lost, and he said, he said, if the seekers stop, then Allah will take the knowledge away from us. So these knowledges, if people don't seek the importance of this stuff, Allah will take them, just as Allah took all these other sciences. But remember, even the most Dr. Yang and his little detection of me, and he stuck a pin in my head as he did a, his his a healing work, which was like one minute or something. Yeah, um, I even I even tested him on something and he just detected it within one minute and then he did this energy healing thing within the next minute. Yeah. So after that, I, mean, I saw it. Yeah. You know, if I ever heard it, I wouldn't have believed me. So if you don't believe me, I understand. Um, but these are many different sciences. So imagine, what's this? What did I just tell you? This is a seed of the Prophet ﷺ's intellect. Number one. Number two, when the Prophet ﷺ would go, go up for prayer, his knowledge. Now you know knowledge, ilm, ilm. And the word lam, uh, which is light and luminosity, ilm and lam and amal are all linked. Ain mim lam, lam mim ain, ain lam mim. You can tell I like Arabic. Huh? Uh, uh, they they all have a meaning. Uh, ilm is knowledge, amal is action, and and between the two is lam, which is light. When you know, you start to see. Now you know. Now you see. In those moments, every person remembered a moment that they saw it. This is what knowledge does, it allows you to be, have built foresight and insight into things. And so he says, the Prophet ﷺ, that he could even see what was behind him. Our understanding of sight is not empirical, it's not based upon observable judgments. I saw with my own eyes, uh, people, I, you know Sidi Ali, if you read Signs of the Horizon, Sidi Ali in Morocco, he was the Muqaddam, uh, he was the Muqaddam, he was the caretaker of the Imam Ibn al-Habib Zawiyah in Meknes. Okay, about an hour from Fez or 40, 40 minutes. He, when he got up from where he was sitting with us, he was blind man, he knew exactly where to go to pray. And when we went uh, uh, straight, he turned around and <laughs> he made us go in a straight line and he was blind. This man in his blind state, the Sheikh came to him in his dream and he learned half of the word of the Sheikh. That the Sheikh gave this is beautiful. This is this guy. He passed away recently, but but Subhanallah, these people are real people. Uh, Sidi Ayashi, one of my friends. This is in Fez. He passed away. Allah who used to give the permission of the Dalal Khairat, if you remember him. He once, my friends. He said my nephew was throwing a toy at him. He's just throwing toys around. He goes, I was worried that the toy is gonna land on Sidi Ayashi. He threw the toy. Sidi Ayashi was a blind man. I met Sidi Ayashi, blind man, and he caught the toy. <laughs> so. So this, so this is what we call superhero stuff. Huh? This is beyond what basic animal humans are. This is what real human beings are. We have to call superheroes now because or superpowers because people are so powerless. Otherwise, this isn't superpowers, this is normal powers. If you go to the Oliya, they say, well, what you? you know, this is normal. Um, and then, he, then the Prophet said as well that he was able to see, he said, I can see behind me. 
Um, and uh, and then there's another one here, another uh, um, a narration uh, that the Prophet Sallallahu could also see in the dark. There was uh, many stories, you know, kohal. If you put kohal on, you actually improve your eyesight. There was a story of a of a of a beautiful, it's an interesting story that this that there was a, a lady in her community, and there was an army coming to attack the village, and she from the kohal could see like three miles away or four miles away or something like that. It's crazy distances. And she spotted them and she told her community, they said, what are you talking about? You could see the army. And then the army came and they, they ransacked the village. And she, she, she realized this. I remember Sheikh Kamza once saying that there were all these, uh, about 10 uh, uh, Arab businessmen together. And as they were together, they were all talking about how each of their kabila and tribe was probably just like some Chaudhrys and some Juts and some Mughals and Mistris all sitting together. Oh, that's Chaudhry, oh, that's Mughal, oh, this, that, yeah. They were like, oh, we're from the Bani so-and-so tribe, we're from the Bani so-and-so tribe. This old man amongst them, he connected all of them through lineage. He said, your fifth grandfather is related to your seventh grandmother who's related to, uh, who was the wife of so-and-so, who was, and he connected all of them. These types of knowledges are true. Some of you may have experienced this. I, I was 16, I was at the bus stop outside Gum Koshif, where I was a young man, and this man, old man, saw me at the bus stop. Five seconds, just saw, not even five seconds, saw me, and then he looked at me a little bit, like he was looking at something at me, and then he just said, oh, you are uh, Haji Bashir's uh, grandson. And I, and I looked at him, I said, how do you know? He says, you have the naqsh. There's just an insight of the mapping there's so many other pathways of knowing gut feelings or gut conversations. Unfortunately, we can't trust our gut anymore, can we? Because our guts are so destroyed by the foods we have. What do we do to, to uh, take care of the gut? Actimel. <laughs> There's the, the, whatever good bacteria was in Actimel was finished by the time it's on the shelf, so don't bother. Yeah. Achar. Yeah, you know, ach achar, yeah? This will replenish the good bacteria in your stove. So now everybody go home today. Oh, maybe it's a bit late now, yeah? Tomorrow have your paratha with your achar. Yeah? It's going to help you with your bacteria. What else? Yogurt. All this natural stuff. You, st you see how they, what did they say? Himya rasad dawa. Your diet is the greatest of your medicine. Someone's depressed over God knows what. This happened, that happened. You didn't get married to Shamila, whatever. Just... Make him a good old cup of tea. Huh? I know. Oh, don't worry. Shmala's got a sister. Oh, okay. Right? <laughs> SubhanAllah. This is human beings function like this. So these, these are all the various different avenues. That once you start, you cannot just see physically in the dark. Even in your darkest of times where people feel there's no, there's no hope. There's no hope. What did the Moroccans read? These are the poems they would read. What does the poem say? In the darkest of times, what do the Moroccans read? Oh Allah, intensify the night so the dawn can come. They didn't say right click, unfollow the night. Which we end up doing. Huh? What we, <laughs> what we do is we don't like it. We say, oh, I need to get out of this. They say, oh Allah, increase this. But if the Prophet who do I if do I, I come who do I, who else do I go to? If you want from this from me, then I'm happy with it. If you want this difficulty for me, I'm happy with it. In today's time, what do we do? We have all these different new narratives that just, you know, right click, unfollow. We spend too much time on Instagram. Um, that they, they say the Prophet ﷺ, he says here that he was even, he was even able to see the, the, queen, uh, the king Najashi, Negus, in Abyssinia. He was able to see him and pray for him, the Prophet ﷺ. Yeah, as we all know, many others uh, that are mentioned here. Uh, one of them is, is that the Prophet, that Imam uh, Ahmad ibn Hanbal, he says the Prophet ﷺ was able to see certain star constellations way before anyone had ever recognized them. He was able to see these star constellations. So imagine, you know, the, have you ever looked at those Hubble telescope images that we see? Yeah, we see these endless stars. Imagine the Prophet ﷺ, he saw it all and knew what it all meant. So we look at it, we don't know what it means still. What, what does it all mean? Maybe we could say the vastness of Allah's power, but there's no greater significance. The Prophet saw it all and he knew it all. So he says the uh, Pleiades, uh, uh, particular constellation, that is uh, quite, quite known. Um, Abu Huraira said that, the Prophet, that when Allah manifests himself to Musa, salam, 
the time when Allah manifests himself to Musa alayhi salam, Musa alayhi salam was able to see a stone in the darkness of the night and he was able to see on that stone an ant a 10 leagues difference. Imagine, you see what's happening here? By the knowledge of God, he was able to see so much because this is ultimate knowledge is the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you get a degree of ultimate knowledge, you can just increase, increase, increase. Um, and then there's as the many that you know that the Prophet ﷺ was able to uh, in his night journey the many many different things he saw. And then the the Qadi Yad he mentions here the famous stories that you all know about about Rukana the the, the wrestler and the Prophet ﷺ wrestled him down. Why is he mentioning this? Why is he mentioning the wrestling time? The greatest wrestler. No? You don't know? In the section of the intellect of the Prophet ﷺ, he's telling you that the intellect of the Prophet ﷺ was so good. He even knew all the moves of wrestling that you think these constellations and seeing in the dark. He could wrestle the most technically sound wrestler, the best wrestler. You'll even learn wrestling. That's why Imam Ibn Iqbal says, Ki Muhammad said, Tu ne to hum tere hai. You can write with the pen and the tablet, you'll be writing it yourself if you have done wafa to the Prophet. If you have become, if you have dedicated your life and connected with the Prophet and made it an intention that you reflect who he is and your love for him, we will give you then all the best knowledge of even Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. What's Brazilian Jiu Jitsu? The, even the knowledge. So then he goes on to here saying that. We didn't see anyone walk more swift than the Prophet ﷺ. It was as if that the earth rolled up for him when he walked. He would ex we would be all exhausted yet he would not get tired. What's that telling you? That the Prophet ﷺ had all the wisdom of even walking. All the potential theories that you see out here. You know, you watch a random video. Um, according to modern research, da -da 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 -da. we don't want modern research. Oh, I'm not uh, anti-modernity, uh, but I'm very much anti-modernism. Modern modernity itself, modos, comes from here and now. Danaya, which is dunya, comes from the close things. Akhira comes from what's at the end. We want to be people who can see beyond things, not just so modernity gives you just... That's why you see every uh, uh, recent, uh, recent study said uh, that you drink too much, you, could, you know, 9 liters is too much, uh, 9 liters is too less, etc, etc. That they're always these ever-changing observable. You should all read, if you get the chance to read Imam Ghazali's Del Deliverance from Ella, Era. If you haven't read this, it's a very good book. And he talks about how he went through all these different judgments about what is knowledge, what is this type of knowledge. If you haven't read this, you should read this book. Hamza, you read this book? Hamza, very, yeah, good, very, very good book. Anyway, and even there that he was not tired at all. So what does it mean? It means you can find that. If you can find that fantastic way of walking, وسلم, and then he, even when he smiled, it was, when he laughed, it was only a smile, they say. You know? And so he's saying, even in this, this was all part of the intellect of the Prophet وسلم, that he was consciously even smiling. This is the intellect of the Prophet وسلم. This is very interesting, isn't it? To see this in this, in this subsection. Why is this under the intellect section? When he, when he turned to somebody, he turned to them completely. Part of your intellect. So if you see somebody who doesn't turn completely, then what does it tell you about their intellect? If you see somebody who's always just ah, mu kolea, like their mouth is open as they laugh, and what does that tell you about their intellect? This is the connections. So inshallah, you, have, you don't have to see anybody, but you just want to see yourself hopefully, yeah? You don't want to be looking around saying, oh no, nah, no intellect, no intellect. Al Rumi says, if you seek knowledge with your brain, then this is what you become a reptile. But when you become, seek knowledge with your heart, you become a beloved. Everything becomes beautiful for you. You're always finding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in everything. And so he says here, and I'll wrap this up now. He says, the intellect is the root of all the branches of knowledge. The fountainhead and the nucleus from which knowledge and gnosis spring forth. Gnosis is knowledge of God. He says, from it comes keen understanding. Okay, this is the first thing you get from knowledge. So inshallah, when you dedicate yourselves to knowledge, so what's the Fardain classes here? Who's doing the Fardain classes here? In Derby? Ustad Amir does it. What else? That, yeah, yeah, good for the children. The children one's fine. Where's the adults classes for for the adults classes? Is Salah doing anything or what? Okay, who's doing it? So, 
Good. So everybody should now, if you haven't done your fard ain, you should, you should be doing that. That's where you go from the maulid next. If you go to the maulid and you don't do that, then you're going to create a little imbalance for yourself. So that's where you go to next. If you haven't already done your fard ain. So he's saying that the first thing you get is keen understanding, clear perception, accuracy of observation, sound opinion, knowing what is best for the self. So you can't even go into modern psychology and all these other variations if you don't even know your fard ain. Why? Because the hukuk of Allah, the hukuk of Allah and the hukuk of ibad will be enough for you to navigate what you need to be doing first and foremost. So you don't want to be making a cup of tea for your parents because you feel like it. You want to do it for a greater reason. When you understand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, these things start to become greater. So then it becomes a principle for you that you make tea for your parents rather than you make it when you feel like it. Because when you don't, want to, you don't feel like it, you won't make a cup of tea. You don't want to do that with your prayers either. And, and uh, the modern world is not just post-rationalism, post-romantic. It's a post-romantic age. So truth is established in your personal perception and, f and, and, and also established in your personal feelings. So be careful. Uh, so, so hopefully, inshallah, you go, and, you go and study those things, inshallah. And then there's uh, amazing things that the, that the shirk mentions here. Um, and there was this, um, and he says, you get to see this from seeing how the Prophet ﷺ knew about the Torah, knew about the Injil, knew about the wisdom of the sages, of the history of the past nations. He made fantastic metaphors. He managed people, he established the laws of Sharia, laid the foundations and it, with in, in, incomparable adab and uh, praiseworthy habits. These are all evidences of the most incredible person. And that's why uh, we have uh, that little short clip of uh, Sheikh Burhan. When he talks about, you know, who do you bring and who do we have? Who, who can match what the Prophet ﷺ was? And so, and he says it so nicely, who dealt with racism at a time when you still can't deal with racism. He dealt with immigration at a time when you can't deal with immigration. It's a beautiful little clip. Um, and he just covers all these things that in the modern world we try to claim the Prophet ﷺ has, uh, has the immense intellect. And so by seeking sound knowledge, we can start to access the amazing intellect. And when you can start to uh, access that amazing intellect, you will start to become one of the greatest, one of the greatest beings in your own communities, in your own homes, into your own communities, and you will actualize your inner Muhammadan reality. You will actualize the great, you know, خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ fi ahsani taqweem. We created man in the best of forms. ثُمَّ رَدَدْنَاهُ أَسْفَلَ سَافِنِينَ Then we lowered him to the lowest of the low, right? Right? Except those who they believe and they do good actions. So believe is seeking knowledge as well. Yeah, seek knowledge, do good actions. Yeah. Uh, and for them is uh, amazing rewards. For my uh, you know, and then who can who can bring any type of a lie after after these lies that the people bring? Uh, and isn't your, your Lord the best of judges? Isn't your Lord the best of, of judges? So, Barakallah uh, Feek, I think I probably definitely went over time. Um, the sister had a quick question, so I just wanted to, is that okay if I just take the question? She just had a question a little while ago. Uh, I would still say that certain certain things about the time and the place are still evident. Uh, so I would still say that something is bringing that thought uh, in and around. And sometimes it's a, it's a, you know uh, how many teachers how many people I've seen go to Hakim Saab and talk about their long long issues. Hakim Salim Khan of Leicester, by the way, I'm referencing. And uh, and what you know he tells them after listening to him for, for so long, he says to them, "Do you go on a walk?" And then he's like, go for a walk. And they're like, you know, <laughs> big crisis. And he's like, just go for a walk. Well, like people don't walk, people don't sleep on time, people are eating all sorts of garbage. If you're eating donna meat and then you're feeling like crap. You are what you eat. So if you're not, if you're not going for walks, you, you guys are lucky. Derby's not, like it's close to Peak District, right? It's that right down the road. You guys should, you, uh, the reflective path should be taking you on a path of reflection <laughs> in the Peak District. 
Wallah, Hamza, man, organize some stuff. Just take people out for walks. You know, you got some good soldiers here. But Wallah, you can just do community walks. Go, go walk, sleep. These are the asbab e sitta, the sheikhs, the shuk speak about, uh, of the tradition. Walk, diet, and mental activity and rest. People will uh, run on internet and think they're physically run. Then they can't go to sleep at night because they've not done anything with their physical body. <laughs> they have sleeping patterns. You know, everyone, everyone who comes to you has a sleeping pattern. I say, walk. Because when you exhaust your physical body, you're actually easier to sleep. So mental activity and rest, physical activity and rest. So do some physical activities. One, my mom said to me, there was a, she watched a clip on YouTube of some wisdom lady from Pakistan. And she said, people want to do, uh, people want to go to the gym. He says, just do your housework yourself. <laughs> yeah, don't hire people to do your housework. You won't feel like you need to go to the gym anymore. So, subhanAllah. It's just, we've had a topsy-turvy modern world now, so just try to look at the essential uh, 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 things, what I just mentioned there. Go toilet on time, very important for people. people. Don't delay your toilet time. And then, what was the last one? Uh, live according to seasons. So Asda tells you you can buy everything out of season. You say Asda, no. <laughs> Asda, no. Yeah, and, and find out what foods are in season and eat those foods is better for you as well, inshallah. May Allah make it easy for you. And a lot of those things then become, uh, that you can manage them better. Not that you can get rid of them. It's Darul Fitan Wal Bala. It's just going to be fitna and difficult times and stuff. So, you know, inshallah, may Allah make it easy for all of us. Uh, there's always things going on. But this is the way of the awliya. You know, they're able to. Uh, they don't get scared, they don't get anxiety, and they don't get depressed over it. So inshallah, we can, we get depressed, we get anxious, but we can get out of it, or we can align it in the right place, inshallah. وَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَاسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهُ وَأَتُوبُ إِلَيْهِ عَفْوَ مِنْكُمْ I definitely, I know I went over with time, inshallah. Can I stand up please? Do salat salam, inshallah. Mustafa Jane Rahmat Bela Kusala Mustafa Jane Rahmat Bela Kusala Shamai Baz Mehdayat Bela Salam Shamae Baz Mehdayat Pela Ku Salam Jesuhani Gari Jamka Toy Bakacha Jesuhani Gari Jamka سوئی Ummati lab pe jari raha Ummati, ummati lab pe jari raha Ummati teri qismat pe la Khun salam Mustafa Jane Rahmat Bela Khu Salam Shamae Baz Mehda Yat Bela Khu
أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين اللهم أنت السلام ومنك السلام حينا ربنا بالسلام ودخلنا دار السلام Oh Allah you are peace and from you is peace and wholesomeness Ya Allah, Ya Allah, give us a life of peace and wholeness and enter us into the abode of peace and wholeness, Ya Rabb. Allahumma a'inna ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa husna ibadatik. Oh Allah, increase us, Ya Rabbil Alameen, in the remembrance of you, Ya Allah. This is what we need, Ya Allah. We thank you, we acknowledge that you allowed us to enter this evening in the remembrance of you. Ya Rabbil Alameen, a'inna, Ya Allah, increase us in that. Ala dhikrika and then gratitude towards you, Ya Allah. We acknowledge our gratitude and complete that for us. Ya Rabb, Ya Rabb al Alamin. Dhikrika, shukrika, husna ibadatik, and having the best form of worship, Ya Allah. Allow us to establish the best form of worship, Ya Allah. Allow us to be qaim in our salah, Ya Allah. Help us to remember that there is nothing more important in our lives than to establish our prayers. And let us be people who are unwavering in prayers. And let us recognize the jihad that exists in that moment against the nafs to establish the wudu and establish the prayer and know that it is far better for us to do that and anything other than that will only be detrimental to our health, our mental, our physical, our spiritual, our social well-being, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Anyone who has come with any openings, any difficulties that they're seeking, Ya Allah, uh, seeking resolve from, uh, uh, oh Allah, anyone who's looking for anything in their marriage, in their, in their family, Ya Allah, in safety, in security for their kids, uh, Allah, for their parents, khususan uh, uh, for the, the, the brothers, uh, grandfather who is, is in hospital, Afwan, who has had a stroke, Ya Allah, give him a shifa kamil, Ya Allah, a kamila, Ya Allah, a complete, complete healing. And for Sidi Razwan's uh, mother, uh, who's, in, who's, who's, who's ill as well, Ya Allah, we turn to you in these times, Ya Allah. And any, every other person who's here who is looking for any type of a, 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 situation, a situation like that or a situation where they are looking for life to be breathed into any one of those experiences from the darkest depths of our hearts, Ya Allah, to the, to the, to the, to the darkness of our, of our actions, to the darkness of, of our homes, Ya Allah, from the darknesses of our workplaces, of our communities, of our roads, of our societies, for the people of Derby, Ya Allah, bless all of them, Ya Allah, and bring these places to life with the way of the Prophet Sallallahu Ya Allah, and make these places mini Medinas, Ya Allah, and make them green and full of light, Ya Allah, make the people who are suffering, Ya Allah, bring them back with that Medinan life, Ya Allah, and make them connected with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in every, every step of their lives, Ya Allah, all, all of us, Ya Rabbil Alameen, and forgive us, forgive us, Ya Rabbi, Bil Mustafa, by the chosen one, Balligh Maqasidana, allow us to reach our goals, our targets, Ya Rabbil Alameen. And forgive us for that which has passed, Ya Wasi Al Karami, O oh, one who is wide in his generosity. Ya Wasi Al Karami, O oh, one who is wide in his generosity. Ya Wasi Al Karami, O oh, one who is wide in his generosity. Allahumma inna ka'afuun tuhibbul afwa fa'afu anna. Ya Rabbil Alameen, your beloved was mentioned here today, Ya Allah, by him. And by him, by who is your beloved, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, forgive us, Ya Allah. Indeed, you love to, to pardon, Ya Allah. Don't just forgive us, Ya Allah. Obliterate all of our, of our bad deeds from our tablets that there is not a single speck of bad action left, Ya Allah. And this is easy for you. This is not a challenge. This is easy for you. If you will, Ya Allah, allow us to, di to die upon Iman, to die upon, to live upon Islam. Ya Allah, keep our family safe. Ya Allah, and every person here, allow them to establish Ihsan and Itqan and excellence and mastery in every pursuit that they have in their lives. Ya Allah, protect our community from all sorts of fitan and, sh and shayateen and bala, Ya Allah. And that starts by the safety of ourselves. Ya Allah, allow us, Ya Allah, forgive us, forgive us all, Ya Rabbil Alameen. And we turn to you. يا رب العالمين وتوب إليك يا الله وتنت يا رب العالمين سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين بالسر سورة الفاتحة بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين 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 Uh, thank you for the organizers. May Allah bless every organizer, every person who's working hard behind the scenes. Bless them in their business, in their hard work. Ya Allah, allow every person here to establish also khidma. Amin. Ya Rab. Amin.